everyone and welcome to my channel. I got this picture here of a garden pavilion from a friend that is a long long time ago and I am showing you the measurements right here you can see them above. You need three pieces of this one without the bow and you need three pieces with the bow or the arch arch in there. So I cut those out on my um, scroll saw and now I am making the bottom piece here. I um, placed that on a piece of paper and I cut out a template that I can cut out in another piece of um, wood that I have out in my uh, workroom. And here it is. It's not that pretty, but um, it will be painted anyway, so it doesn't matter. And here I have my uh, six sides and I am just going to make a pre-fit here with some uh, painter's tape or masking tape taping them together and placing them so I can see that everything fits together I'm happy about the way everything fits together. So I took everything apart, painted the inside walls and I painted that in a color that is almost the same as the wood. So it's hard to see that it is painted in the next, uh, uh, in the next video clip here. Um, and then I glued everything together as you see it standing right here. Then I put flooring in there. I have these mother of pearls um, flat pieces that I found in some store a long time ago. And I've placed them like this in the floor, um, like you see right here. Some of them I didn't glue straight in there and some places I left a little hole and some places I have a half one in there and I am going to decorate that later, but for now it just sits like this. It's everything is glued down. Here you can see that I painted the walls almost the same color as they was before. Now I am working on the outside and I'm using coffee stir sticks and I uh, glued on a square stick here on each corner, kind of uh, for a stopper thing. On each corner I first made a bandage just like the way Ara from Bentley House Miniature shows how to do. It's a piece of paper glued over the corner to make the connection even stronger. Uh, and then I glued on the square uh, stopper pins and now I am just going to make um, these uh, pins in between uh, that is the coffee stir sticks that I have and I'm cutting one in length and I'm gluing it in place. So it's uh, really a big job to do this one. So I'm taking one of these at the time and then putting on some music or a Netflix and just work on this until it's all done. Here and there I am placing something heavy on top of this to make it dry um, with a close contact to the wood underneath. And let's go fast here and make the rest of this side.
When I start on a new robe, I am always starting with the first piece glued flat on there. Uh, and I did that already on this side. And I'm cutting out some pieces that fits pretty well here on these smaller pieces of the front. And then I'm just gluing them in just like on the other side. Uh, remember the first piece is flat on there and then the next one is uh, going over. And then I just continue by stacking them all the way up. When I'm getting up here to the curved place, I am making sure that these stir sticks are going out over the curve because uh, I want it to be covered all the way when it is all done. And for that, I need to have it over the curved line. So I'm just going to cut this one off in the length and seeing how many I use for the uh, top part of the other one I have almost the same amount of uh, stir sticks up the sides on each side of this little thing and i didn't even count them in the first place so that was actually pretty cool so when i'm ready i'm just gluing the last pieces on here and i am going to use my clamps to make sure that they stay in place because i um found that they made a tiny bit of a gap and Watching this right now, I see that the top pieces here are a bit crooked, but in the end, uh, it really does not show that much. So now you just leave it to stand and dry for a good amount of time so that you're all sure that it is all dry. Then I used my Dremel sander tool, this one, and I went all the way around the frame of the door to make sure everything was nice and neat and now i am going to take my sandpaper and sanding these stir sticks so that everything looks really really nice and neat i have these long strips of wood that i am going to dip into boiling hot water be careful you can really burn yourself in this water and I almost did. So I'm bending these with the water and then I'm placing it in the door frame and making sure that it is going all the way up to the top and cutting off the excess at the bottom because I can measure that length when it's in there. And then I'm just gonna leave them there until this wood is all dried again. I do this in all three of the door frames and I think it took me a day or two to make sure that the wood was all dried. When the wood is dry, I am using some more of my wood glue and I am putting a tiny bit of glue on this uh, wooden strip that now have the right shape for my doorways. And I'm putting that all the way around so I'm sure everything is glued tightly when it's all dry after this. Then I am going to put it into the uh, doorway and I am using some masking tape to make sure that it will sit uh, in the right place and that it will have uh, some touching with the door frame and I will leave it like this until I'm sure it's all dry oh and I do that in all three of the doorways then the doorways are all done Now to the outside of the house. I am using this model color from Vallejo and this is a light turquoise, um, turquoise is that. And I'm just going to color all the outside walls here with this uh, color. And I'm taking my time and just making sure I get it all over into the small crevices and so on on the front side. So 
Just do that on all the sides on the front. You can of course use another color if you rather want that. When it's all dried I am using a crackle medium again from Vallejo and I'm just uh, painting that all over just like if I had to paint the house one more time. Making sure that I have it everywhere and also into the crevices and so on with this one. So again I'm taking my time and painting it on on the outside and then I will leave it to dry so it's really really dry before I continue. Here you can see it's dry but it's very very shiny. Uh, this way you can see where you have it and where you don't have it. I'm using some white paint again from Vallejo and um, I am just taking my brush and painting this all over the house and it will slowly crackle this white paint and let the um, turquoise show through in these small crackles. I did let this dry for a whole day just to make sure everything was really working here and dry and you can see the small crackles in there. Um, I like to make them a bit bigger so I am using a varnish and this is a matte one and um, I'm just popping that all over. This is actually from Vallejo again. And you can see how it starts to crackle again because I am kind of um, reactivating the crackle medium. And I go over it a few times with this glaze just to make sure that I get a nice bunch of crackles everywhere. And I'm doing this on all the sides of the house. Because of the crackle medium this is going shiny even though that it is a matte glaze. I wanted this pavilion to have kind of a step down from the pavilion to the uh, lawn that we are going to make sometime. Uh, somehow, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, and um, I'm just using my ruler here to make the edge around the pavilion. And here I'm just uh, drawing the inside edge so I know exactly where to put it when it has been uh, cut out. Then I cut that out on my um, scroll saw and I'm just using my wood glue here to glue that really good in place on this extra uh, step thing. When the glue is all dry I am just using the same color as I used for the bottom of the pavilion. This is just some black with some white uh, paint that I mixed but I didn't mix it 100% so here and there I get dark spots and here and there I get lighter spots and that is um, looking really good here. I'm making sure that I have the edges and that everything is really well painted and then again I am going to leave it to dry. I took a tiny bit of water and I mixed a, a tiny bit of a grey colored uh, paint in there again from Vallejo. Mix it around and then I am just taking a lot of this mixture and just kind of putting all over the outside of my house. Using a baby wipe I am wiping off a lot of the excess uh, paint here. So I only have the paint in the crevices and it's kind of dulling down this white and shiny look it has 
uh, and it looks a little more worn and used and I kind of like that. I'm normally not good at aging thing, but here I am actually give it a, a, giving it a try. I do this again on all sides of this little pavilion. So that was how far we made it in this first part of the pavilion. I will um, continue next week and I hope to be able to make everything done there. So uh, look out for that video for how to make the roof and a few small details in the pavilion. I hope you liked this video so give it a like if you did. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Happy crafting!